Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Verbals is the second lecture we are going to have. Previously, the lecture was on participles, all its forms, past, present, and perfect. Jaran was also covered in the previous lecture, but the main focus of Jaran's was how these are to be distinguished from present participle because both have ing form, ing form. Therefore, they are always posing a little confusion for students. This lecture consists of gerunds and infinitives, and we will be discussing gerunds and infinitives in a comprehensive way. Let's have a brief revision. Verbs, as I have told you before as well, consist of two kinds, finite verbs and non-finite verbs. Always remember that finite verbs are bound by person, number, subject and tense. They cannot be time free. They are always within time limits. On the other hand, non-finite verbs are always independent of person, number, subject and tense. This slide is again telling you the difference between finite and non-finite verbs. Finite verbs are divided into three kinds. Principal verbs, linking verbs is MR, auxiliary verbs am, can, shall, should. On the other hand, non-finite verbs are consistent of three kinds, infinitive, participle and gerunds. There is another difference, verbs are actions in both cases, but in finite verbs case, actions are dependent on time and time is indicated always through tenses. So verbs have tenses. That is in the case of finite verbs. As far as infinite verbs or non-finite verbs are concerned, they are denoting action. But actions are free of time. They are not dependent upon time. So no time requirement and verbs do not have tenses. This is the basic difference. Time bound is finite verb. Non-finite verb is not time bound. Non-finite verbs are divided into three kinds, participles, gerunds, and infinitives. Participles, as I told you earlier, has already been covered in the previous lecture. Gerunds has been touched upon, but this lesson or this presentation is going to discuss gerunds and infinitives in a more detailed way. What are gerunds? Gerunds, dear students, is a verb in its end form that functions not as a verb but it functions as a noun. It names an activity rather than a person or thing. From your primary classes you must be uh, asked to memorize that noun is always a name of a person, place or thing. But here we have gerund which is a verb actually and it is naming an activity, naming an activity and still it is acting as a noun. Any action verb can be made into gerund. Let's discuss the types. Gerund can be acting as subject when it is occurring in the beginning of the sentence. Swimming, you can see the ing form attached to the verb. But it is naming an activity, naming an activity and still acting as noun. Swimming is his passion. Here gerund is acting as subject. Gerund as direct object when it is receiving the action. I am enjoying my swimming sessions this year. I am enjoying what? I am enjoying my swimming sessions. So swimming sessions or swimming activity is receiving the action. Therefore, it is the direct object. Gerund as object of preposition. When it is occurring after the preposition, then it is gerund as object of preposition. Example of this is I have got many awards in swimming. You can see that swimming which was the which was the gerund in all the sentences in different position is preceded by preposition in. Gerund as subject complement. Subject complement is when it is giving you more information about the subject. Swimming is my favorite hobby. So swimming more information is thrown about swimming, is discussed about swimming, that it is his or whoever it is, it is his favorite hobby. Hope that is clear. 
gerund phrase now don't be confused or don't be dissuaded by another term because gerund phrase and gerund are one and the same thing only remember that the gerund phrase is a group of word while gerund if it is singularly used it is denoting a singular word gerund phrase is a phrase consisting of a gerund and any modifier or objects associated with it meaning a group of words by modifier or objects we mean a group of words gerund is a noun made of from a verb root plus ing we had already discussed that a whole gerund phrase functions in a sentence just like a noun and can act as a subject object or predicate nominative this predicate nominative is similar to subject complement it is giving you more information about the subject so don't be afraid don't be getting nervous by the new terms that are being used these are most of the time just another name for the same thing gerunds can appear alone or they can be bound together with other words to form a gerund phrase example of this is reading is a favorite activity of mine now reading is an activity which is used as a noun but it is a singular word therefore it is just a gerund look at the other sentence reading with a pen in my hand is a favorite activity of mine this is a whole string of words therefore attached to reading therefore it is gerund phrase reading with a pen in my hand is a favorite activity of mine this is the difference between gerund and gerund phrase gerund is a singular word gerund phrase is a group of words attached to the main how to recognize gerund phrase gerund phrase will follow these rules which can help you identify a gerund phrase in the sentence the phrase can start with a gerund when it is acting as a subject we had already discussed that the gerund phrase will either have a modifier and object or both in that case it will be acting as object the entire phrase will action function as a noun and the phrase will have singular agreement with a verb different functions of gerund phrase gerund phrase as subject the gerund phrase will be the main focus when it is the subject of the sentence by main focus we mean that it is always occurring in the beginning of the sentence eating after midnight is a bad habit now just see that it could have been eating is a bad habit in that case if we just had eating then it would be gerund but since we have eating after midnight that makes it a phrase because we have a group of words so eating after midnight is a gerund phrase which is occurring in the beginning of the sentence and therefore it is the subject of a sentence in this example the sentence is about eating after midnight and so this gerund phrase acts as the subject of the sentence gerund phrase as object just as we had done gerunds similar words as objects similarly they are doing gerund phrases as object the object of a sentence is something that is receiving the action you all know that a typical sentence will have will have a subject a verb indicating what that subject is doing and an object that's responding to the verb here's an example travelers must anticipate must foresee dekhna chahiye kya meeting loads of interesting people along the way now here you have a catchy thing a very tricky thing if you if you are if you are able to see it meeting loads of interesting people now meeting is an activity but it is acting as a noun here so this is a gerund phrase meeting loads of interesting people again just notice it is not just people it is interesting people so interesting in this sentence is if you have remembered participle pres present participle present participle because it is defining people therefore present participle acting as adjective 
hope that is clear and you are not getting confused gerund phrase as subject complement subject complement predicate nominative is one and the same thing so don't be confused with two terms used at the same time subject complement and predicate nominative is giving you more information about the subject subject complement is a noun that follows a linking verb linking verbs are forms of the verb to be to be is the basic form such as am is are was and were my favorite hobby is gardening now again gardening is described as something done not the act of doing it so it is a gerund phrase come to infinitives now what are infinitives we have to start with the definition definition of infinitive is that infinitive is a form of verb that appears in its basic form it is preceded by a particle to and can serve as an adjective as an adverb or a noun infinitives perform different functions in a sentence infinitives as nouns when an infinitive is used as the subject or direct object in a sentence it functions as a noun the sentences subject performs the verb while the sentences direct object receives the verb hope that is clear examples of infinitives are i love to sleep just note in this sentence that the verb is love who or what receives the action of being loved the infinitive to sleep this makes to sleep the direct object of the sentence therefore the infinitive functions as a noun that expresses an opinion it could be replaced with a person place or thing as in i love pizza then infinitives are acting as adjectives now you always must have come across the definition of uh, adjective that it is a word that modifies adds or describes a noun so infinitive functions as adjective when they modify or describe noun in a sentence joel wants to read wants a book to read in the sentence the verb is wants and the subject is the noun book we also see the infinitive to read what is the purpose of to read in this sentence it describes the book joel isn't looking for just any book he is looking for a book to read in this sentence the infinitive functions as an adjective so when the infinitive is giving you more information about the noun it is or it is modifying it it is qualifying it it is acting as adjective infinitive when these are acting as adverbs infinitive functions as adverbs when they are used to give more information about adjectives verbs or other adverbs in the sentence the students were excited to go on a field trip the infinitive you can recognize is to go what is the purpose of to go in this in the sentence the infinitive to go gives us more information about the adjective excited why are the students excited because they want to go to the to uh, they want to go on a field trip it tells us what the students were excited about they are going excited about going on a field trip so the infinitive functions as an adverb giving you more information about the adjective again we come to the infinitive phrase and again i told tell you that don't be confused by infinitive phrase it is just the same thing infinitives are single words phrases are group of words infinitive the, the functions are the same infinitive phrase starts with an infinitive and includes other modifiers or objects group of words 
like infinitive themselves infinitive phrases can act in three different capacities we had already discussed that nouns adjectives and adverbs when infinitive phrases are used as nouns as a noun an infinitive phrase will either appear as the subject of the sentence or the direct object and always remember that in the case of infinitive used as noun it is usually answering the question what infinitive phrase as a noun when an infinitive phrase works like a noun it answers the question what so the infinitive phrase will be the subject which does the verb or an object which receives the action of the verb i don't want to study for my test the question you can be forming from this is what don't you want i don't want to study for my test to get good grades is my goal now it's uh, infinitive is starting the sentence therefore it is the subject but it is still acting as a noun what is the goal it is to get good grades so it is acting as a subject so in both forms either object or subject infinitive phrase that is the group of words can act as a noun and how to identify that it is acting as a noun it is answering the question what infinitive phrases as adjective when an infinitive phrase acts like an adjective in a sentence it describes a noun or the noun it means that it will describe a subject or an object here are some examples i want a tutor to help me study so what kind of tutor do i want one who helps me in study so help me in study is a group of words therefore it is an infinitive phrase i need a magazine what do i need a magazine for to read on the train so since it is describing noun magazine to read on the train therefore it is infinitive phrase acting as adjective infinitive phrase as adverbs when an infinitive phrase works like an adverb it modifies the verb in a sentence adverbs answer questions like where why how for what reason purpose the infinitive will answer the same question i went home why did you go home i went home to study for maths so to, to study for maths is the infinitive phrase which is acting as adverb he sat down to take the exam he sat down for what he sat down because he wanted to take the exam so it is giving you more information about why did he sit down last but not the least students verbs should not be taken casually they are crucial to your learning english language and write beautiful english expression how to improve your expression if you have a very good idea of what verbs actually are and how to use verbs in appropriate places you will believe me will add mastery and you will add achieve perfection in your written expression by learn verbs participle phrases one of the form of verbs these add variety to your sentence structure gerunds help improve the reading flow and these are very crucial why because they are reducing the word count for example you are using in order to in many places this can be reduced to just two followed by the verb without any loss of meaning and if you have achieved mastery on smart use of verbs and verbal phrases you can make your writing more colorful and more precise so a little attention to verbs can make you achieve wonder in your written expression hope you will take it seriously and would try to improve what verbs are and how these are different from usual verbs two things are never to be forgotten that and these are of great help and this should be a relieving agent to you there is no such thing as gerund clause infinitive clause or participle clause 
and if these do exist, these can be existing in confused students' minds only. They are verbals. Verbals occurs, uh, occur either singularly or they are occurring in phrases. This is a brief assessment how much you have learned from your verbal exercises. In the following paragraph, verbals are underlined. Above each of these words, identify what kind of verbal it is, gerund, participle or infinitive. Tiffany, bored with the usual presence, asked for a pet for her birthday. Walking a dog of her own had been her dream for a long time. A poodle puppy, wagging its tail in a pet store, caught her eye. Hoping for this pet, Tiffany went to the store every day to look at the beloved pup. On her birthday, Tiffany and her mom hurried to the store to buy the poodle. Tiffany named the excited puppy Engelbert, which means unusually intelligent. Playing, fetch and teaching Engelbert new tricks now take up much of Tiffany's time. Hope this exercise proves to you easy after what we have done. And this is... This drives us to the end of this lecture. Verbal has come to an end. I hope this was informative to you and you will make it a part of your learning, long learning process and you will add it to your written expression. Thank you and all the best for your future.